this great event. And in particular, thanks uh, to Jennifer Smith. Jennifer and I met uh, four years ago, and uh, she and I have been on a mission together uh, to really try and uh, persuade Americans to put their cell phones down, to put their texting devices down while they're driving. And uh, Jennifer has traveled the country uh, really doing the kind of activity that you're all doing here today, educating people uh, about the really bad things that can happen when you use cell phones and driving and use texting devices while you're driving, and also uh, persuading states to pass laws. When we started this adventure, uh, only 18 states had passed laws. Today, 38 states have passed laws. And uh, we've made a lot of progress. And we've done it in just four years. Uh, we, we, we can make a difference. What it takes is really mobilizing people, educating people, and then having all of you uh, persuade uh, legislators to uh, pass good laws uh, with uh, good enforcement, and that is the first step. Uh, I say there's really a number of things that, that people can do. Number one, just take personal responsibility. Uh, we all have these devices. Is there anybody in the room here that doesn't have a cell phone or a texting device? Raise your hand. There's one hand up. There are two hands up. There's only two hands up in this room. And when we started this campaign, uh, we said it was an epidemic because we all have these and we all think we can use them every place, everywhere that we go or wherever we think there's an opportunity to use it, including behind the wheel of a car. Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands because I know the answer. Every one of you have used this at some point or another while you've been driving your car, either texting or cell phone use. And you know how dangerous it is. Some of you know from personal experience because family members have been killed, family members have been injured, family members have been in accidents, friends have been killed, friends have been injured, friends have been in accidents. You know how bad these are and you know how unsafe they are when you're behind the wheel of a car, if you're looking down at your texting device and you go four or five seconds, your car goes the length of a football field and you're not looking. Now just think of that, a four or five, six thousand pound automobile and you're not watching and it runs into somebody that's a pedestrian or somebody that's in another car. We have to do better. We can do better. We have proven with great partners, like all of you, that we can do better. Florida needs to pass a distracted driving law. That's, that's why you're here. They do. Florida can be like the other 38 states. Take a model piece of legislation that we have available. That's what we've done. After our first distracted driving summit, we put together a model piece of legislation. And when anybody ever called us, we would say, here's a good starting point for you as legislators. And we would give it to state assemblymen or state senators or governors. And we would say to them, here's a good place to start. And in Four years, we now have 38 states. We need all 50 states. We need Florida. Florida is a big state. Florida has a need to pass a distracted driving law. And um, one of the purposes of this meeting today is to encourage all of you to find out who your state legislators are and to encourage them uh, to pass a good piece of legislation. In the new transportation bill that was just signed into law by the President a few months ago, there is there are resources, there is money that we will make available next year 
to states that have passed distracted driving laws. And let me give you two illustrations of grants that we gave, one to Syracuse, New York, and one to Hartford, Connecticut. We gave each of those states $200,000. They matched it with $100,000. So each state had three hundred, dollars or each of the cities had $300,000. And in a year's period of time, what they did with that money, they paid police who have many, many things to do, but they paid them using that money to sit on street corners when they saw somebody on a cell phone or saw somebody texting, they wrote them a ticket. You know what happened? Distracted driving went down. Now we, in our organization, the Department of Transportation, we have an organization called NHTSA. It's our safety organization. We have career people there that have worked their whole careers on saving lives. So when the seatbelt laws were passed 20 years, 20 plus years ago, Nobody was wearing a seatbelt. Nobody. People said, it's too uncomfortable, I don't want to wrinkle my clothes. You heard all the excuses. But as states began to pass laws, and we provided incentives, now 86% of us, the first thing we do when we get in a car, 86%, we buckle up. Think of the lives that have been saved. And I also want to give a shout out to Mothers Against Drunk Driving. We would not have taken all of the drunk drivers off the road that we have done if Mothers Against Drunk Driving had not encouraged states to pass good laws. So look, if we can't do it on our own, we need good partners. We started a program called Click It or Ticket. Now 86% of us buckle up. We provided some incentives to states. Mothers Against Drunk Driving just stood up and said, we need to pass good laws. And they have. And now we have .08, which is the national standard. That's the blood alcohol standard. And a lot of drunk drivers have been taken off the road. Some of you that are my generation remember a time when the police maybe would give somebody a pat on the back and send them home if they'd had too much to drink. Or put them in a cab or actually drive them home. Police don't do that anymore because of good laws and good enforcement. So there's three things. Personal responsibility. Just simply put these in your glove compartment. Put them in the middle glove compartment. Put them away. Turn them off when you're driving. And don't be calling people when you know they're behind the wheel of a car. Don't be calling employees. Don't be calling your children when you know they're behind the wheel of a car. We need more personal responsibility by all of us. We're hooked on these. We need to get unhooked. We need to sh show some self-discipline. That's number one. Number two, good laws. But we also have to have good enforcement, and that's where our friends in law enforcement come in. And they have been very good. As I said, police have many, many things to do. Many things to do. And there are limited resources in all communities around America today. Limited resources for police and fire and other servant municipal services. That's the reason that Congress created the kind of program where we're going to be able to make grants next year that will help with enforcement. But your state has to pass a law first. Florida needs to pass a law. We need good partners like you to persuade your legislators to do that. Now I know all of you here are not from Florida. I know you're from other places around the country. And we, we can outline in great detail the states that need to pass laws, the remaining states. And I know that that will happen. This will not get done unless we really mobilize and we really encourage people. Think of the lives that could have been saved. Go to distraction.gov. It's on our website. Now I know there are people here who are going to tell heartbreaking stories. I've heard many of them. And they are heartbreaking. Loved ones that are now gone because somebody was stupid enough to be using a cell phone while they were driving or texting while driving. That's what it is. It's stupidity. 
It's not following good, safe practices while driving your car. That has to end. It will only end when people like you mobilize, the way that Mothers Against Drunk Driving did, the way that others have, to provide good safety programs for our teenagers, uh, for all people. 3, 000, more than 3,000 people were killed and an estimated 418,000 were injured as a result of distracted driving. That's too many. That's 3,000 too many and 416,000 too many. Every one of those could have been prevented. Every one of those could have been prevented if people would have taken personal responsibility and put these away. And it's up to us now to work hard to get the state of Florida and other states to pass good laws. I'm very proud of my home state of Illinois. They have passed a good law. We had a meeting like this. Jennifer organized a meeting like this in, in Dallas. Uh, Texas needs to pass a good law. And those of you from Texas I know are, are working on that. And uh, we have a blueprint which outlines a path forward and offers concrete steps that can be taken to reduce the risk of distracted driving. But as I said, we need good partners. All of you are here today because you want to do something. You wouldn't be here if you didn't want to do something. And there's something that every one of you can do. First of all, take personal responsibility. Put this away while you're driving. Number two, find out who your legislators are in your state, in your community, and go talk to them about passing a law so that people are not distracted while they're driving. And then begin to mobilize. And we will work closely with you in terms of your ability to Look at model legislation. We will work closely with you in terms of uh, our ability to provide uh, grants uh, next year when it comes to states that have passed good laws. Working together, we will be successful. We have proven that we can do that in other states. And Florida can do it also. So thank you all for coming. Let's form a partnership today. Let's.